Good morning. Um, so you're still a little bit new to this Washington game. Does it feel fun? Yeah, it doesn't feel new anymore, but thank you. Is it fun? It is fun. Uh, okay, good. Well, let's have some fun. Um, let me start with a variant of something that Mick Mulvaney told a group of us at the White House yesterday when he was briefing on the budget. He said that the test that they applied in the budget was, can I justify to a teacher in Kenosha, Wisconsin, spending money on programs uh, with their tax money? And that was the justification for why uh, he uh, explained deep cuts in Medicaid, which uh, go to poor people, Medicaid benefits poor people and old people in nursing homes, uh, food stamps, and many other programs benefiting the vulnerable. So my question for you is, how do you justify to that teacher in Kenosha giving large tax cuts to wealthy people by, uh, through the administration's plan to eliminate the estate tax, to uh, cut the capital gains rate for high income taxpayers, and to cut the top rate? Well, first of all, let me just say on, on the budget that's coming out, uh, I think the president made some very difficult decisions, and the overriding issue is he feels that we need to make a significant investment in our military, and that's a priority in the budgets, and you see that. Uh, I think also uh, it is important that we get to a balanced budget within the 10-year period of time, as, as you've outlined. Now, on, on the tax side, um, the president's agenda is all about creating economic growth, and what I would say to that teacher or anybody else, we have had subpar economic growth for the last eight years, and we fundamentally believe that the economy can get back to more normalized levels of sustained economic growth, which is uh, getting to 3% GDP. And that's not this year or next year. It, it, it phases in over a period of time. And the president's agenda is to create economic policies to create that growth, which is around tax reform, is around regulatory relief, and is around renegotiating our trade deals to have fair and balanced trade. So uh, our, our tax plan is about economic growth. On the personal side, uh, we are cutting the top tax rate in return for eliminating almost all deductions. Right, but let me just uh, give you the results of the distributional table. Tax Foundation, a conservative group last year, after the president during the campaign revised his tax plan. And they say that the uh, people in the 40 to 60 percent uh, income bracket uh, would gain 1.3 percent in after-tax income from the president's plan. People in the 60 to 80 percent bracket would gain 1.9 percent from the president's plan. People in the 99 to 100th tax bracket would gain anywhere from 10 to 16 percent of their income. So both in absolute dollars and in percentage terms, much higher increase at the top. Why is that necessary given the trade-offs required in the budget? Well, let me just comment that you're, I think you're looking at the campaign plan. You're not looking at our current plan. I was actually with the head of the Tax Foundation yesterday, and they haven't scored the plan yet because they don't have all the details. And well, right, but the, the, what, what plan, said, the outline you guys have uh, put out so far resembles reasonably not, well the 2006 not, not, not really. I mean, the Tax Foundation and others, and I've said this, when we come out with all the details of the plan, we're working very closely with the House and Senate, and when we come out with the details of the plan, it will be scored and the distributions will be reviewed. And uh, the president's priority is about creating a middle income tax cut. Now, two things I would just comment on. You know, you mentioned the estate tax and you mentioned capital gains tax. I mean, the capital gains tax is being eliminated as part of the health care reform. So that's, that's not really part of, of doesn't have taxes. To uh, it, it doesn't have to be, but I think most people feel that the tax on capital gains is perhaps the most inefficient tax capital gains are what increase investment in this country. The, um, let me just uh, press on this one more time. When you, when you look at Medicaid, $800 billion cuts over 10 years, um, that benefits vulnerable people, whether they're poor, whether they're old in nursing homes. Why would you tell those people that a tax plan that uh, has such substantial benefits for people at the top is fair. Well, again, you know, as I've said and I've talked about this repeatedly, we'll look at the distribution 
when it comes out. The president's objective is to create a middle income tax cut, is not to create tax cuts on the high end, and, and we'll look at those numbers. A again, this, this is about economic growth. You know, and I would just comment on the business side. There, there are many economic reports that show more than 70% of the business tax is passed on to workers. Mm -hmm. So another big part of our priority is to create a competitive business tax system. We have one of the highest tax rates in the world. We tax on worldwide income. We have this concept of deferral. It's not a surprise. There's trillions of dollars left offshore. And making business taxes competitive will benefit American workers, which is also a big priority of ours. Now, you said on my network uh, after the president was elected that there would be no tax cut for people, no absolute tax cut for people at the top because the elimination of deductions would offset the uh, rate reductions. Now, your campaign plan had a cap on deductions but did not achieve that goal. It had a big tax cut for people at the top. Are you pledging now that when you, we do the distribution analysis of the administration tax plan, that there will be zero benefit for, say, the top 10% or top 1% of taxpayers and a uh, much larger benefit for middle-income taxpayers? Well, let me just comment that uh, that comment that I made on CNBC ha has now become so infamous that it's been named the Mnuchin Rule during my congressional hearing. We coined it. And, uh, you know, I, I, I said I felt I was in great company with the Buffett Rule and the Volcker Rule now that there was a Mnuchin Rule. So um, what we're doing now is working closely with the House and the Senate. Our objective is to come out with a unified plan that the House and the Senate will support and that can be signed by the president. So what I've said repeatedly is the president's objective is to create a middle income tax cut. Um, we're gonna be working closely, but again, that's our intent. I, I can't pledge what the results will be since the results are gonna be a combined effort of the administration and the House and the Senate, but the- But your intent would then the, be the a middle income tax cut and a zero tax cut for people at the top. Again, what I'd said is the president's priority has been not cutting taxes for the high end. His priority is about creating a middle income tax cut. So we'll see where it comes out. Different people have different views, but that's the president's objective. Um, let me ask you about the budget and how it reflects uh, taxes. You've said that you thought <clears throat> the administration tax reform plan would result in a $2 trillion uh, boost to uh, revenue as a result of economic growth the dynamism of the Correct. Uh, tax cut. Larry Summers, who sat in your chair, wrote a, a piece in the Washington Post today where he said that the administration budget has committed the most egregious accounting error uh, he has seen in 40 years, which is this, that the administration assumes that $2 trillion revenue boost that you talked about, but does not reflect at all the cost of the tax cut itself which has been estimated by the Committee for Responsible Federal Budget in a median range of about $5.5 trillion. He said that you are double counting the effects of the uh, uh, tax cuts in ways that he would flunk a freshman economic student for. Well, let me first comment that I can assure you that when we come out with the details of the tax plan, we are not going to propose something that costs anything like four or five trillion dollars. We wouldn't do that, and uh, I've said that repeatedly, and people who have estimated that, in my mind, are just you know, not responsible because they don't know the details. Now, as it relates to uh, the president's budget, and again, let me just state that, as you know, the, the budget process, the president proposes a budget. There will be many changes to this budget made by Congress. Uh, Congress controls the, the purse strings. Um, we felt it was premature to put in any changes to the budget uh, as a result of taxes since we're not far enough along to estimate what that impact will be. Um, so the, the budget was built on what is the administration's uh, economic plans and in, in, in economic numbers, which we've, we've talked about, which are getting to 3% growth. So uh, I think, Larry, uh, I think in all fairness, 
to him. The, the, the issue is more of this is a preliminary document that will be refined as we go through a process with Congress determining how money is spent and as we go through the process of uh, working with the House and the Senate on, on taxes. And ultimately, the numbers will be completely transparent. Um, it'll be scored by uh, the joint tax group. It'll be scored by outside groups. It will be scored by the Treasury Department. We have over 100 people working on this. Uh, and there'll be a completely transparent process. Now, let's talk about economic growth. You have said that growth is your objective, and your budget projects that you get on a sustainable basis to 3% growth after that. That's correct. Uh, mainstream economists that I have seen have uh, settled on their growth estimates of in the range of 2%, a little above, a little below. Where do you see that growth coming from in light of this fact? Economic growth is a product of labor and productivity. The administration is proposing through its immigration policies to actually reduce the supply of labor. Where does the pro productivity increase come from that create, gets you to 3% that your uh, economic colleagues think is unrealistic? Well, let me just first comment uh, on the immigration policy. Um, the president is focused on stopping illegal immigration. Although he's working with congressional Republicans, Tom Cotton, for example, has been consulting with the administration's economic team on reducing legal immigration. I understand, but the primary focus is on illegal immigration. Now, uh, two things I would comment. Uh, the published unemployment rate, as you know, is very low, roughly around 4.5%. A good component of that is people that have left the workforce because they can no longer find jobs, so they stop looking at jobs. So you know, we think that if you look at the, the real unemployment rate, it's somewhere between the 4.5% level and the 8 and 9% level. So one component of this is making sure that we create jobs for people who want jobs and will come back into the workforce. Uh, and the other component, as you said, is, is productivity and capital investment. And a big part of our economic plan is about boosting capital investment in this country. Um, Let's talk a little bit about the path for tax reform. Um, the initial uh, plan from Republicans in Congress was to have health reform on the president's desk by Easter, have tax reform on his desk by August. Uh, you have said that, for obvious reasons, that that's a very optimistic timeline on tax reform. Mitch McConnell, the Senate Republican leader, has said his aim is to pass tax reform in this Congress. Does that mean it is your expectation that if tax reform takes place, it is more likely to be in 2018 than 2017? Well, I, I would hope that we get this done this year. Uh, it, is, it is critical to our plan for economic growth, and I can assure you, you know, uh, we are working very closely with the House and the Senate to get that done. And uh, I think I had said on your show earlier in the year that uh, we were going to try to do that by August. Um, I think it's pretty clear now that we're not going to get that done mm -hmm. by August. You notice, by the way, that all significant things that the Treasury Secretary says, he says on CNBC. I just have to point that out. I, I, I can't acknowledge that comment because that would be promoting your show, which I'm not allowed to do. Fair enough. I'll, I'll handle that. Okay. I just, just want to be clear on that. Um, okay. But our, our objective is to get it done this year, and uh, I'm still hopeful that that's the case. It's uh, now, our, our number one priority. Now, you know it's very difficult for a couple of reasons. First, uh, you cannot move, if, if you're going to do the tax plan that Republicans have envisioned through the reconciliation process, you have to first finish health care reform, which is very much not done. Then you've got to pass a new budget, some variant of what you've proposed and what Republicans want, create a new reconciliation process, and then move on tax reform. All that's very difficult. Uh, Senate Republicans are still entertaining the idea of working with Democrats, which would imply a much different tax plan if you need Democratic cooperation. What do you think are the chances that we end up with as a uh, something that can attract broad support, uh, a much more limited tax program that does not include some of the uh, cuts in the top rate, state tax, capital gains, and instead focuses on 
international tax reform, for example, to bring money back that is parked overseas? Well, I, I think it is critical that we do comprehensive tax reform. It's been 30 years since we've had a major change. I think the personal tax system is way too complicated. Um, in our plan, 95% of Americans won't need to itemize and will be able to do their taxes on a large postcard. This will save an enormous amount of money and government resources at the IRS. Um, we're moving towards a large part of the population doing electronic filing. And this is about creating efficiency for the American taxpayer and simplifying the system and creating a middle income tax cut. So the changing the personal side is a big priority of ours. Uh, and same on the business side. This isn't just about you know, uh, bringing back uh, one-time overseas profits. This is about changing the system so that American workers have a fair chance in competing and American companies can be successful. I had a, an interview recently with Josh Bolton, former White House Chief of Staff, former Budget Director, um, uh, now the President CEO of the Business Roundtable. And he said, perhaps for obvious reasons, since he's at the Business Roundtable, that the critical element of tax reform is not the personal side. Nice, there are people, some people might like to get a tax cut, but the growth comes from the business side. Is that true? Well, I I again, I would say it's all true. So yes, we need to fix the business side. That is what's pro-growth. But we want to create a middle income tax cut to boost the economy. And we want to simplify taxes for American people. And, and of course, this isn't easy. It hasn't been done in 30 years. So we can listen to all the reasons why it can't get done. Uh, but we're not going to we're not going to follow that. And I, I hope this can be done on a bipartisan basis. Um, the types of things that we're doing are pro growth and are pro the American worker. And I, I hope that there are Democrats that are on board with that plan. The president talks much more about deep tax cuts than he does about tax reform. So I think there's concern among some in Congress that the least common denominator is going to end up just cutting rates and not doing tax reform. You don't like the border adjustment tax. Uh, there's resistance to eliminating the deductibility of interest, for example. Uh, what other conceivable ways would you have of broadening the base to finance a drop in the corporate rate? Oh, there's, there's, lo there's lots of ways. I mean, again, we, we have, uh, as I said, we've got a huge team in Treasury that's working on this. And this is about broadening the base. There are a lot of companies that pay no taxes. There are a lot of companies that pay a lot less than the 35% tax, and th this is about. But is there anything things. you could point to that says we are going to press hard to close this loophole in particular, or, um, or to or to tax uh, something that we're not now taxing? Well, there, there are there are a lot of things that we can do, and I would just say. You but know, any on, on in the, particular you'd point to? I, I want to be careful in until we have a plan and releasing the whole plan, not to pick one thing, since one of the things I think is important is that whatever we do, we create a level playing field. One of the problems with the border adjusted tax is that it doesn't create a level playing field. It has very different impacts on different companies. It has the potential to pass on significant costs to the consumer. It has the potential of moving the currencies. We want to make sure that we create a level playing field. And on the personal side, I think you've seen this. You know, one of the biggest deductions that rich people take are state and local taxes. And uh, we've said we think we should get the federal government out of the job of subsidizing the states on taxes. And th that raises a significant amount of money. I mean, uh, you know, for the two places that I've lived, which is California and New York, um, that that's not creating a tax cut. But it wouldn't offset it wouldn't offset the benefit of lower rate ending a state lower capital gains taxes for people at the top. It would just um, wouldn't, mathematically. You know, it, it it, again, I think you have to look at. We're looking at the capital gains as part of health care and health care reform. It was put on because of health care. It's getting taken off because of health care. That is not part of 
the tax plan. And as it relates to the estate tax... But if you tax, left it in place, your plan would be more fiscally responsible. Uh, again, I think our plan will be fiscally responsible. And, you know, just as you see, the health care is paying for itself. We'll see the tax plan when it comes out. Now, look, the estate tax, um, also called the death tax, um, the reality is a lot of rich people use a lot of estate planning and don't pay it. Um, this hurts a lot of farmers. It hurts a lot of people who have businesses that they want to pass on. But if you look at and the actual incidence of the estate it, tax, it, it falls very heavily to a pretty small number of wealthy families. Um, it, it, it does, okay? And I would just say, you know, there, there's a lot of people who feel that the estate tax a debt tax is a tax on top of when people have already paid taxes. And as you said, it, it, it's, its impact for those people it impacts, it does have an imp a big impact. And you know, many people have to sell their family business, many people have to sell their family farm. But again, you know, there, there are people, um, th this is something where people come down on both sides of it. Uh, okay. okay. Very last question. Um, the president, M Michael Peterson mentioned in his opening remarks that the president has pledged not to touch social, main Social Security and Medicare. And he said that to the people who he said had been getting a raw deal and he was going to protect them. He also said he was not going to touch Medicaid during the campaign. The uh, Medicaid cuts that you have proposed in this budget and that were proposed in the American Health Care Act go much beyond what would be required to roll back the expansion of Medicaid that was in the Affordable Care Act. So my question is, why did the president break that promise not to touch Medicaid, separate from the ACA expansion? And does that mean, perhaps to the gratification of people in this room, that he is also likely to break his promise on Social Security and Medicare? Uh, I think the president has no intention on changing Social Security. Um, and, uh, you know, I will tell you, as a, as, as a trustee of the Social Security Trust Fund, um, this is something that Congress may look at, okay, but the president does not want to change entitlements. But uh, if he doesn't want to change entitlements, why did he go along with the Medicaid reductions? Um, again, I think the, the Medicaid reductions and what's gone on, what the president is trying to do is control health care costs. Uh, I think, is, as you heard in the introduction, health care costs are one of the largest challenges. Uh, we have a system that was broken, and we're trying to fix that system, and that, that's, that's what the, the health care plan is all about. Right, but he, he did say in the campaign he wasn't going to touch that health care program, Medicaid, and Medicare as well. Uh, again, you know, I, I'm not going to comment on the, the health care. The health care is going through the system. Uh, again, the tax plan is all about creating jobs and growth. Secretary Mnuchin, thanks so much Thank for joining you. us.